What is up guys? I have finally got around to taking a day off stream to record all of the guide videos for Wrath of the Lich King, so expect a bunch more of these over the next few weeks. Uh, this first one is going to be the Season 5 Disc Priest Bis List, and without further ado we're going to get straight into it. Uh, this season we are going to have quite a lot of PvP gear on, damage is going to be really high, uh, there's going to be a lot of teams that are going to try and zerg us down, so we're going to have about 920 resilience with the option to put on more if you obviously know that you're facing a lot of teams that are going on you that kind of thing you can whack on a little bit more potentially the rings that kind of thing but we'll get more into that later for now i'm going to start off with the helm which is going to be the deadly gladiators mooncloth hood standard and we're going to put the uh intellect meta in that because it is actually buffed in wrath and uh even stronger than in tbc and then in red sockets we are going to be putting Spell Power Resilience. Spell Power in Wrath is a lot better than healing is in TBC. And I should quickly note that there is no healing anymore in Wrath of the Lich King. It is all Spell Power now, so healers benefit from Spell Power just as much as casters do. The coefficients on a lot of our spells have increased drastically to make it a lot more worth focusing more on getting Spell Power. Uh, whereas before, healing was sort of the second... Uh, afterthought and more of a result of you know getting spirit items that kind of thing so it's definitely something we're gonna be keeping in mind a little bit more but I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that this is just a bit list uh, the enchant is obviously gonna be the spell power resilience one then the neck is gonna be our first PvE item now there's gonna be a few PvE items but not that many and my logic behind this one is that it's a 226 item level piece uh, and it has hit on we want to try to get at least 4% hit in wrath now, you could not get rid of the last 1% hit in TBC. In Wrath, you now can, so the hit that we want to aim for is going up from 3% to 4%. Keep in mind that things like Undead and Blood Elf, they no longer have the Shadow Resistance uh, passive. It now becomes 2% chance to resist Shadow spells, or just all spells for a Blood Elf. This means that you can actually remove this with another 2% hit. So for a total of 6% hit, you can actually remove the extra chance to resist from these classes, or these, these races, sorry. Things like Rogue have an additional 4% chance to miss through talents. So you can actually remove that as well if you go up to 10%, but then you get into sort of absurd levels. It starts impacting your other stats too much uh, and becomes not worth it. I would say, however, that 4% is definitely worth getting in your base gear set, and then maybe you can grab some kind of an offhand uh, with extra hit should you need it. It's starting to get very detailed in that case. Uh, and to be honest, once you're at that level, you'll know it anyway. So the first uh, PvE item is going to be the Neck, the Wormerist Necklace of Power. Then we're going to have the Deadly Gladiator's Mooncloth Mantle. And our first JC gem is going to be in this one. We're going to be running JC for the Resilience gems. Uh, and they're going to go in the yellow slots. We're going to be putting Spell Power Resilience on the Enchant. Uh, the Cloak, we're going to pick the MP5 one. Now we picked the MP5 over the Spirit one because MP5 is generally stronger in Wrath. Spirit is slightly nerfed, so even though Meditation is now 50%, uh, the MP5 version of this cloak is better. Obviously, the pace of the game is a lot quicker as well in Wrath, so you're just not going to have that many opportunities to stop casting and regen fully through Spirit. So we choose the MP5 cloak for that reason. Spell pen on the, on the enchant. So for the chest, we're going to be running the Deadly Gladiator's Mooncloth robe as well. Again, same... Uh, mindset behind the gemming, the yellow is going to be the JC gem and the red is going to be spell power resilience. Uh, the enchant is just going to be 20 resilience, pretty standard. Uh, and then braces, we are going to be running the cuffs of salvation. And we're going to be whacking a 30 spell power enchant on that. Now there is also the option for a 40 stamina enchant, which you can consider... If you are feeling like you're dying a lot, you really need to be more tanky, that kind of thing is definitely an option for you to switch up. So keep that in mind. Now, weapons is a little bit more uh, more complicated than what you see, but we'll go through it. It's, it's not that much to think about. So right now, I've just got the PvP weapon offhand and wand selected. Healer versions of all of them. And... The 63 spell power enchant on the weapon standard. Nothing too crazy there. However, there are a couple of other options that you can swap to. Say you're not the target and you want more healing. The Torch of Holy Fire actually has considerably more spell power on it. Uh, and you're not going to feel the, the lower resilience 
because you're not the target. So having a Torch of Holy Fire to switch to is definitely uh, a bonus and something that you should consider trying to get. Uh, offhand, like we talked about earlier, potentially grabbing uh, something with a little bit more hit, like the Surplus Limb, uh, could be a good shout. Uh, against teams with an undead, say an undead priest or an undead rogue, just to get that little bit of extra chance to hit fears and that kind of thing, uh, or, or blood elves. Uh, you also have the option to run something like matriarch spawn. Uh, I would say that's probably your best option. After that, it starts getting pretty monkass. So yeah, if you want to just run a torch of holy holy fire and a, and a matriarch spawn, then you know, when you're not the target, then that's completely fine. Uh, Wand, obviously, you've also got the uh, extra hit option and the spirit option. Don't think there's an MP. Oh, you could also run the, the Fading Glow. Either of these is completely fine. As I say, it's not it's not massively rigorous. Uh, with PvE, you don't really get to choose what you get, so you can make use of, of all those items that I've just listed uh, in different ways. Now, the third option, I guess switch that you're going to want <clears throat> is the uh, the spell pen option. Now you're not you're not going to be able to get 130 pen this season without gemming, uh, but you will be able to get like 90 odd. So if you run the Gladiator's Piercing Touch uh, as a swap and the Grimoire on top of your 35, let's see actually how much is that going to be? Back these on. So that actually gives you 109 pen. So you, you need one, one uh, 20 spell pen gem, which you can chuck in, you know, your gloves. Uh, you can chuck it in your belt, wherever, really. Uh, so I would say once you have these options as a switch, uh, and this is for teams that have the higher resistance. So through shadow protection, priest teams, uh, potentially paladin teams through the shadow aura, or mages, for example, who have mage armor generally high resistance, warlocks, that kind of thing. Once you have these items, which you'll grab later in the season, I'll probably do another video on kind of item purchase order, that kind of thing, uh, and the priority that you want to put upon different items, because I know that's quite a popular topic. Once you have these, then I think it's worth actually switching out one of your blue gems to a 20 pen gem, and that way you'll have all the 129 uh, spell pen, and that will cover basically all of the, the resistance clusters that you'll need them against. But for general play, where we don't always need that, we can run this. Uh, I would say the very last potential weapon swap that you would, would could, could use, I guess, is some kind of a spirit staff. Uh, I actually have no idea which staff has the most spirit. We've got energy staff with 85. You can obviously put the spirit enchant on that. Uh, Charmed Siege. That's not too bad. 90. Slightly less spell power. I would say that's that's still fine though. Uh, either way, you can run either of those and you'll get a good amount of spirit. Obviously, energy staff would be something that you would get at the very end because obviously you need to spend arena points on it. So I'd say if you can grab yourself this from Nax, uh, this is going to be your easiest spirit staff option. But as I said, again, in Wrath of the Lich King, this is not a massive, uh, a massive deal because you will not be out of combat regening that much. Not anywhere near as much as TBC. The pace of the game is a lot quicker, uh, but it is something that's nice to have if you're really trying to min-max. So first trinket is going to be the Living Ice Crystals, and this is essentially a bauble. Uh, it's nice to have only a one-minute cooldown. You can use it off-global while silenced. Uh, a very powerful save item that's going to be very good in the first season because of how high the burst damage is going to be. Then obviously a medallion of the horde if you're not playing human. The other trinket options I would say are like spark of life. If I can find it. Something like this is going to give you a lot of regen if you are playing against stuff that is not killing quickly, which I don't even know what that would be, but potentially spark of life could be good. Uh, obviously, you lose that passive MP5 from the Living Ice Crystals, uh, but you gain some haste. I think that's probably the other good PvE item, the other good PvE trinket this season. Obviously, Battlemaster Trinket could be a good choice. The Spell Power one, I would say. 
other than that, I think that's pretty much it for trinkets. Rings, so we're going to be running two PvE rings, and this is going to be the Wormrest Band and the Ring of Decaying Beauty. Both of them have nice haste MP5 on them. Uh, and the reasoning for choosing the rings is because there's only really one PvP ring uh, that we can make use of, and that already has hit on. And we actually at 4% hit already. So taking this would take us over cap against a lot of stuff that we don't need to be over cap for. So we're almost just wasting stats in that regard. So we've chosen these two rings just because they're the nicest haste MP5 rings, uh, which are both stats we're going to benefit a lot from in the first season. Boots, just going to be the standard Treads of Salvation. There's our third JC gem. Uh, we've got the, I believe that's Tuscar's Vitality on there. Uh, pretty standard. And then Legs is going to be our other PvE item. And again, you can see this is another 226 item with the hit haste on and that's going to take us up to the four percent as we talked about and we're putting the 40 resilience 28 stamina enchant on that to uh to really bolster how tanky we're going to be belt is just a core of salvation standard 16 result gem we can only use three jc gems so this is actually our fourth yellow slot so we just whack a 16 result in there uh, and then blues is going to be just be resilience mp5 obviously resilience is really strong this is actually a new combination for t uh, for, for wrath that we didn't have in tbc potentially you can swap this for a 20 pen gem when you have that off and wand to bring you up to the 130 before that i would say potentially not worth it and the reason we have two gems in this belt is because we have a belt buckle on there and then the final item is going to be the deadly gladiators mooncloth gloves with a hand mounted pyro rocket this is from NG, which is going to be your second profession. This is uh, off global, really nice addition to our damage. Awesome to use all round. I, I highly recommend it. You're going to have a great time with it. Uh, and then again, we're just going to put the 8 Resil for MP5 socket. And that is pretty much it. That's rounded it out. Uh, I have tried out a lot of different combinations of items. This, I felt like, had the most rounded... Uh, stats in general and just kind of like the most item value in general as you see we've got a bunch of 20 uh, 226 items uh that really boost the overall like spell power i guess of the build if you do have any other item suggestions please do let me know i'd love to hear it i'm obviously uh always trying out new combinations i think there's so many different variables when it comes to gearing options in in wrath that it's really, really hard to pick something that is actually, you know, full on BIS uh, because things are good against different comps, against different matchups and different brackets, all these things. So there's no real one size fits all thing, I would say. This is just a guide. Feel free to tweak it as you see fit for whatever you're playing. I've tried to give you kind of an overview of all the different options that you can kind of select from. Uh, and then from there, it's kind of up to you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it was insightful and I will see you next time.